there we go. That's better. Yeah. So basically, again, this is offensive. Um, it's meant to be offensive because we're bombarded with offensive things in media, including yeah. this this late latest label of of color, which is obnoxious on so many levels. Um, you know, again, you're walking around calling calling people colored is extremely racist. Janice, I'm sorry, forgive me. I'm, oh, it's so nice to see you. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, Janice is back. I don't want to say too much personal information, but I'm glad to see her here. So, so, we, so we're talking uh, about racism. Yeah, long story short, basically I'm going to continue a presentation I started. I've only got about a dozen slides. I, I added a couple to, to those uh from last I just want to give a description so I can share it on Facebook and my YouTube channel. Ah, so. ah good. Ah, good. Yeah. Basically what I'm calling it is racism is racism, regardless of who you are and what you believe and all that. If you're being racist, you're being racist. Let's yeah. stop. It. Let's stop it. You know? So are we talking about it in regards of to Christianity or is this just completely separate? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, Sunday definitely trying to do my best to keep it in a Christian spirit. We're also mm -hmm. mentioned Islam's racism and how, you know, give examples of how racist that is and how those same people that attack the Europeans for being white will also uh, show solidarity with, with Islam, which is extremely racist. Um, even with, the, with other Muslims, they're racist. So, you know, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, so we'll cover all, all three essentially. And, and I'll give a, a couple of, brief descriptions about some movies um, and talk about, in fact, how um, Hollywood was not only created by Jews, but in the Freemason element was actually part of Hollywood from the very beginning as well. And I'm going to give you evidence of that today as well, which I never got to do last week either. Okay. Yeah, covering a lot. But I've got slides. I'm going to try to zip through it. Jump in whenever you want, but I'm going to try to stay focused. So I'm going to get through this and then, yeah. like I said, put it behind me so I won't have to subject people to this uh, if I can help it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, yeah, again, I apologize for the offensive thumbnail, but I thought it was really appropriate giving all the obnoxious stuff we're, we're bombarded with for the past decade, the whole rise up thing. Barack Hussein Obama became president, and you think that would be a perfect opportunity for peace, as if we needed it at that point. Uh, the Ku Klux Klan was dead and racism was um, all but over, at least towards black people. Um, but yeah, instead of that, we, um, um, no worries. Yeah, so instead of that, we got this, um, you know, this rise up uh, thing. You got all these black actors and so on go, coming on stage, going publicly and saying, all right, black people, it's time to show your ass now. And then you have, mm -hmm. wherever you turn, even in video games, um, this message of rise up, of, of people revolting, but for what? So it, it's, it's been a, it's an obvious propaganda thing, uh, literally uh, in Willie Lynch spirit. Uh, if anybody who's not familiar, there's a Willie Lynch letter that talks about how to create division. And we might cover over that, cover that again. That was in last week's presentation. We talked about that. Amen. Um, yeah, bottom line, give, stay focused on Christ and none of this will be true. Those that are focusing on Christ don't have this in their minds and hearts at all. They're just give it that we're all God's children. That's the end of it. Sorry? No, no, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, I mean, but those, so yeah, let's just, but yeah, basically I'm trying to cover that. I mean, I want to bring up Bill Cosby. I, I believe I mentioned that last stream. I don't know. I can't remember if I put any slides or not. I don't think I did, but I've heard that name be thrown around so much, but I've, n I've never ever looked into who he was. Oof, making me feel old. But yeah, Bill Cosby was actually, sorry. Was he like a comedian or something? Yeah, exactly. That was his big thing. He was a comedian. That's how he started his career. Um, he okay. ended up break doing breaking into the movie scene with his first movie was actually about a young black family a freed family that went westward to establish their own cottage their own home and the issues that they had to overcome um so at the very from the very get-go he was politically active in media 
And then he did a bunch of other movies, comedic movies. Uh, the first one was a serious one. The next one was, just, the rest were more comedic. He was uh, actually, ironically, uh, contributing to the stereotype. Back then, it was a jive thing, a 70s uh, decade, give or right. Um Yeah. And are, we, he, are, are we live now? Are we still live? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you said you'd come off stage. That's all. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then he did a couple of TV series. The first one, um, I think it was called Bill Cosby or something like that. And then about a decade later in the 80s and early 90s, I think it went on It went on for several seasons. The Cosby Show, which is what he's most known for. But even throughout, he would do his comedic act. And he was known for his clean-cut comedy. And he always uh, rebuked um, those that curse and, and, and all these kinds of things. And he was mocked for that even back then throughout his career, how clean he was. Um, okay. Yeah. So his, his uh, TV series from the 80s was actually about a black doctor, a family that lived a, quote, normal life. It wasn't saturated with racism uh, towards white people like many of the other shows were. And we'll, we'll touch on that briefly. So he was just uh, just a just man in his life. Yeah. So in the 2000s, oh, later in life, uh, I think he might have been given an honorary doctorate. That I'm not sure about. But regardless, he gave speeches at a couple of universities. One of them was his alma mater. And what he said was he talked about society. People need to have integrity, take responsibility for their behaviors, and because his alma mater, that university, was predominantly black, it was a black college, as they say, um, suddenly he became public enemy number one. And this was like, I can't remember, was it someone? Was he labeled, labeled like a, a liberal then, basically? No, no. Because back, like, back then, that would have been, you know, because what, what type of uh, decade are we talking about here? I think that was around 2015, give or take. It might have been earlier than that. I'm not sure. Oh, 2015. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. Interesting. Yeah. If, if anything, by the blacks, it would have been called the house nigga or uh, Uncle Tom or that kind of thing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've I've had some funny um, ones thrown at me. I mean, we've had the. I mean, over here, it's um like in the UK, we used to have a comedian called like Roy Chubby Brain. Have you heard of him? No. Sounds a little bit familiar, but no. He was. He was. He was quite racist, but. There was a difference because back in the 60s, 70s or 80s, you used to be able to joke around a lot more than what you could do now. So black people got on with white people uh, really well. And they kind of joked around a lot with each other, if that makes sense. So like the black guy would yeah. call call the white guy like a bunch of Uncle Tom's cracker and stuff like that. Cracker Jack. Cracker, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then they they would basically call them the N word or something like that. But it wasn't. They pull it in shows, TV shows, to make comedy, and we, they mixed the cultures of both to make it funny for the people to establish dialogue between both black and white people that it's okay to be different, and we should celebrate it, and it's funny. And mm. so, some of the programs still to this day. Um, some I, I watched a guy called the black conservative who has a youtube channel and he watched a program aired back in the 70s 60s called love thy neighbor that was done I heard, here. I heard of that one yeah 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 so old time classic and um that, that was really bad but people enjoyed it they really did and they they got into the spirit of it but nowadays if you was to air a pro such program, well, you'd be you'd be in a lot of trouble now. <laughs> like some of the stuff that gets said, people would be straight to Ofcom, um, and they'd be trying to get it cancelled, shut down. People would be getting sued left, right, and centre. Yeah, I um, mean, you know, I've got mixed feelings about that, and I'm actually touching on that. You know, I, in the in the spirit of racism being racism. Yeah. With all the gangster rap and all that going on about nigga this, nigga that, and all that. I mean, the media earlier was saying it's okay for black people to be racist towards their own people, which is kind of absurd. But it's not okay yeah, for white people to be racist at all. And I, at this point, that a few years later is now white people are not allowed to exist. So that's, see what I'm saying? 
yeah but, um, and you see videos as well where you see like white rappers and they're allowed to say the n-word because they're oh, really? they class them as their brother and stuff eminem's one of them uh know <laughs> you know that. where he's been allowed to drop the n-bomb and no one said anything about it but if like me or you were walking down the street and we said it not even in a nasty way just like to a friend and someone was walking past and they were they found it offensive you'd be in big trouble <laughs> yeah honestly i don't know if i would ever call one of my friends nigger like uh, i don't think so um i just I advise to... you don't say it full stop <laughs> yeah exactly i mean you know it's just i wouldn't in fact i wouldn't call one of, one of my white friends redneck or hick or hillbill or anything like or crack or anything so no matter how you yeah. slice it it's still a, a pejorative it's still a derogatory you know of course regardless so cool. but I, that being said i did have a, one of my best friends was uh was home well, he was bisexual really anyway um but yeah i mean my 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 pet name for him was fag so but then he called all his friends fag so whatever you know back then that's just that was just that was just the thing he said it was no big deal you know no. yeah, yeah. So I understand what you're saying, where some people can say certain things and it's okay. But I would probably say that's probably more, it should be more of an intimate thing versus trying to push it and promote it and, and sensationalize it in media, make it a cultural thing. Yeah. I just Especially, think if it, there shouldn't be any of it. Like it should be, if it was used in the past as a, a way to reference people in a bad way, then they shouldn't even be using it themselves. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that, I guess that's my point too. You know, it's just as as um, as a, one of the streamers, I, 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 I'm not sure it was Give the Gospel or Janice, but they say, you know, I think both of them actually come to think of it. They're saying, yeah, bottom line, if you keep your focus on Christ, then you're not compelled to do that to begin with. In fact, you would you would rebuke it instead. Exactly. So again, I, I don't want to uh, bore people to death with this meme, but I think it's quite important, significant, just to premise everything else we're doing here. The, yeah. the true spirit of respect and love for others is to allow them to exist. I mean, even the quote liberals uh, preach tolerance, which is you know the pinnacle of their achievement when it comes to loving others. Is uh, oh well, I tolerate you. Okay, whatever. But at the very least, you know that's showing. You can, you know, let's show some degree of respect. Just, you can argue that. You can argue that. I would say, I would say, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, not to get off on a tangent, at least a lot of people, you know, to, for example, to be British, to be Greek, to be Chinese. Oh, we've got no problems there. You can't say, speak against the Chinese. To be Jewish. Oh, we've got no problems there. The ADL, you can't say anything about the Jews. To be, you know, Spanish, to be whatever it is you are, you know, there shouldn't be a problem with that. Unless... You're, you're a detriment. And now we get to the next group, the coerced graphics, the forced blessing. The people who do sit there and preach about multiculturalism and equity and equality and um, inclusion and all these buzzwords that are completely hypocritical and forced on you. And, and it just so happens genocidal. This is They're calling for a one race, one gender, one religion society. I mean, how is that, how is that inclusive? How is that multicultural? When everyone acts, looks believes the same they worship apparently they want, they want baphomet worship you know i mean yeah. the same gender right they're also anyway so yeah i mean that's the exact opposite of what we're talking about that's actually a crafty evil spirit and now in the same vein those people will show solidarity with islam the third group who do the very same thing the ethnic cleanse they they uh, genocide and they do all the other things, the uh, sexual deviancy, the, the oppression, the slavery. They're still slave, to, slave, slave owners to this day. I know. Um, and, they, and the worst thing is as well, it's the common, most common statement you'll hear from Islam here in the UK is that Islam was responsible for freeing slaves. And <laughs> I just have to stand up when I hear, and it's usually, you know, Muhammad Ijab Ali Dawa, Speaker's Corner. Always them to and uh, uh, Sheikh Uthman ibn Farouk, th that guy. Oh my days! The amount of times I've heard it from him too. 
where they 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 spill off yeah islam we uh we stopped slavery we ended slavery and you know christianity was had a, a heavy hand towards it and that's how the gospel was shared they used to make the slaves christian and all this it's like what Thank right. you, fine, right? Oh, what? And it's like, right, let's get the Quran out. Let's talk. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So, real quick, um, again, I didn't, I went into more detail about this. I think even yesterday I might have brought this one up. Um, but actually, no, it was la last week. We, we went over this list last week, uh, last Sunday. If you want a more descriptive detail into this list, please take a look at it. Basically, the first uh, row is movies from the 1970s on that were all black, all black cast and so on. Literally nothing but black. Now, if you pres prescribed a TV show and said, well, there's going to be nothing but white people, that would be racist. But there was never any complaints about that. And I'm not complaining about it. But in lieu of these facts, you can see a half dozen 70s, over half dozen 80s, about a dozen 90s, about... Uh, um, close again, yes, yeah, almost a dozen in 2000 and on. Where now we're just uh, race race swapping. We're doing the virtual ethnic cleansing of white people. Um, yeah, I mean that's the problem, isn't it? So, and, uh, on top of all, having all these shows dominating sports, dominating music, dominating all these things, movies, comedy, you know, being put on a pedestal, giving all these extra privileges like uh, scholarships and so on and so on. And the list goes on. Despite all these things, they were made to complain that they're oppressed, act like victims. And yeah, I mean, it's the exact opposite of reality. This is, this is problematic. This is racism propaganda at its worst. And we've seen that come to fruition with BLM, something I tried to warn about myself in my own comic book series before that ever happened. Hey, this is where we're going. I also warned about January 6th, the same thing. It's, and we'll, we'll touch on that too. But anyways, I mean, it's, it's just, um, again, bottom line is this. If you stay focused on Christ, none of this happens. Not to mention, um, yeah, you're not going to be racist, obviously. Yeah, and then the middle the middle row has some lead black actors and all that kind of thing. The bottom row um, may have black actors in it, but they don't really, they're not featured. Uh, but it's still, they're all liberal leaning, have li liberal themes in them. So, so no, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? Okay. Oh, that's it. All right. All right. Um, so, yeah, last week I did half of my list of, of personal things that I, I've endured. I've got a list of uh, both um, what I've endured at the hands of black people and what I've endured at the hands of white people. Now, let me make me clear. One of my best friends was black. I had plenty of black friends otherwise, not necessarily best friends, but black friends, certainly acquaintances, certainly co-workers. Um, and generally, I didn't have any issue with them. Now, I'd have some issues with, like, let's say, some co-workers who would come up to me and, like I said at the very beginning, uh, oh, oh, are you racist? Uh, like, what? Can you even just say hello? Get, get on my face, you know? So those kinds of people, yeah. I mean, they were obviously problematic. But outside of that, you know, this was not an issue until recently. Again, Barack Hussein Obama, a half-black president, mulatto president, opportunity to completely bury uh, the hatch. But no, instead, they were called, even though specifically, explicitly by him, to have a revolt. During both of his terms, he would go to speaking to college campuses, and tell people to rise up. And you saw the messages throughout. I mean, you can play Madden NFL game, and you see the message rise up. Yeah. And later later in the 20 teens, it became, you know, Black Lives Matter. And you still see the message rise up. Rise up for what? To what? How about a thank you for all the extra privileges? Against the white man. Right. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? It's, uh, it's all Willie Lynch letter stuff pitting us against each other in every possible way. But the disgusting thing is that white Christian Europe is being targeted, and that's not a coincidence. Okay, that, that's not the go. It's an attack. It's an affront to Christianity. It's not only anti-Christian spirit; it's explicitly, especially now, um, attacking that. Sorry, cut you off. Did I cut you off? No, no. 
Okay. All right. So let me continue my, my list. When I was interrupted last Sunday, I was talking about living in a small town in the quote South, a town that was nicknamed Razor City. Um, it was a border town. Uh, yeah, basically, I was invited by some uh, white friends, let's call them, uh, as a teenager at the time, to go to a pizza hut. And I was a pizza, I was a restaurant owner myself, a small mom and pop restaurant pizza owner, Greeks. Mm. But yeah, I was excited about going to pizza hut with them. I was also excited about being invited by them to go out. You know, I was like, okay, I'm being accepted mm -hmm. to the circle, so to speak. So we went out, we did our thing. Uh, could you mind cutting off your 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 mic? I got we got all kinds of feedback and and uh, yeah, uh, sorry, sorry, no worries, no worries. Thank you. Um, so yeah, basically, um, yeah. So they invited me to pizza, and I went out and hanged out with these guys. And long story short, um, the mood changed in the middle of our meal. Uh, what I thought was breaking bread, and and the, and the van back back to home because we went to a neighboring community for this pizza hut going back home to the small town every, everybody's real quiet and somber and i was like what's going on why did why did the mood die so one of them mentioned going to the bar i was like one of them said hey are we going to the barn and during the meal and so i decided hey you know let me bring that up and i said hey guys are we still going to the barn and nobody responded. Everybody looks sullen. And then the driver goes, um, what do you guys think? Uh, should we go to the, still go to the barn or what? And then another one goes, oh, it looks kind of cool. He's like, and they're like, yeah, yeah. He's like, no, nah, we won't go. I'm like, oh, and I was like, oh, man, why why not? Let's go to the barn. Yeah, they kind of like looked at me weird and didn't say anything. And, this, and that was the end of it. And, of course, uh, I never heard from almost all of them again. A couple of them became my buddies, interestingly enough. But of course, those of you hearing the story can gather, obviously, those guys were probably KKK, and I probably escaped, um, um, yeah, I, I probably escaped the Ku Klux Klan. By the way, in case you missed it, I'm not black. And here's the KKK inviting me to the barn, trying to you know, basically, I don't know. I don't know what they had planned for me, but it couldn't have been good, right? So, yeah, wh what do you think about that? Do you guys have the KKK in your neck of the woods? Sorry about that, mate. Um, I got cut off then for some reason. Uh, oh, really? What was you saying? Yeah. That's okay. Um, yeah, no, I was saying uh, about the KKK experience. Did you hear that story by any chance? No. So we know a lot, a, a lot of, about um, the KKK here, but not. It's. I don't think it's uh, a big thing here in the UK. We had uh, a, a major rise. The most racist thing we've had here was called the NF, the National Front, um, in the UK, and they targeted non-white people, and they were a political party that seen the rise of immigration hitting levels that were really bad but instead of like doing a normal thing and talking about it they actually instructed people to take arms and start what they call um packy bashing uh which was a regular thing um with the sikhs uh back when they first started uh coming to the uk um but that ended thankfully um mm. i mean you still have what you call your average skinhead nowadays but no apart from now that, it, sorry apart from that the like the, i don't think the kkk have ever had a a thing going on here in the uk i might be wrong but i just i've never heard of it yeah it's i'm glad you said nowadays because that's important that's that's exactly what again appealing to the Willie lynch letters that's exactly their goal they're they're trying again the KKK was dead, neo-Nazism was dead, but they've pushed us so hard and they continue to push us hard so that we will revolt and we will attack each other. And that's, that's the whole point. And all of a sudden you're seeing these neo-Nazis kind of resurface as a response to all the BLM nonsense. I'm sorry. And the funniest thing about it is you'll see white people opposing other white people. 
the left liberals going against people they target them call them right-wing fascists and uh all this racist and you know islamophobic homophobic whatever um and literally all you are is just a christian so you you, you know you, you're not racist you're not homophobic you just you know you you just know there's only biologically two genders that makes sense it's common sense um you're not racist at all because christ taught you to love absolutely everybody but if you have concerns for your own safety because of a certain religion that's bringing a lot of hate and won't fit in or integrate with your culture then that you know is a concern that you're allowed to have um but again you get called racist or islamophobic if you if you if you speak up or even if you just mention or talk about anything that you find worrying if if your narrative doesn't fit theirs that's it you're you're cut off you're cancelled your class is this that and the other and um yeah you've basically got two two parties of people you got people of minority the black asian minority F ethnicity bame and then you've got the left radical with them and you've got the muslims and you've got all them in one group and then on the other side you've got your normal conservative christians um or just people who just i don't know back in what five years ago would have been classed as a regular person just a normal person with common sense yeah essentially good 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 word common sense whatever happened to that <laughs> you know, i miss common mm -hmm. sense <laughs> it's not so common now <laughs> yeah unfortunately all that brainwashing that's a problem we've we've had so many through mass media so many triggers implanted deeply into our, into our psyche that people you know again not only are reacting and becoming neo-nazi but yeah just without realizing it you can be triggered because you've been bombarded with this stuff it's Statistically speaking, scientifically speaking, statistically speaking, most of the people will be will be brainwashed, even if they realize, even if they're aware that they're being brainwashed. And that's what they're doing for years now. They're making sure that they get the most of us. That way we, we attack each other for stupid fabricator the reasons. The most worrying thing about this all, Nicodemus, is, and this is my personal view as well, and I'm, it's the view of many others. This was all planned years ago. Yeah. Uh, there, there was an interview done by an ex KGB agent called Yuri. Um, Bez, I can't Bez went off. That's Bez went it. Off. Yeah. And he said in 1984 or 1986 in an interview that there was um, three or four stages to get people to have a civil war or do basically demoralize a nation to a point you can just take it without, take it right in front of them and they wouldn't fight back mm -hmm. and he went on explaining this for these four parts and one of it was basically just saying that you you teach leninism and marxism and when that enters into the schools you've got that generation that grows up and then they start um getting brainwashed to the point where you can turn around and say to them black the color black is black or blue or is blue and they will say no it's not it's green and they will genuinely be convinced that you know a true fact right. is not a fact and this is what we're seeing now with genders with pronouns with identity and we've got an identity crisis yeah. here in the west well, we're not allowed to be proud of our history you can't be a patriot no more um if you are then you're classed as a slave trader <laughs> um and you're made to be feel you know this is what i was saying last night embarrassed and ashamed of of your predecessors and your heroes and what have we got to replace it people like sam smith well is that a role model for masculinity is it no it's not Dude, the guy can't even he, he he can't even identify with his own gender he, he's confused to who he is he doesn't know whether he's a man or a woman he wakes up and changes his mind every day. Oh man, I don't know who Sam Smith is, but I don't want to know. I'm already been no, you don't. Believe me, you don't. Okay. <laughs> hey. All right. Um, let me finish my list real quick, and I'm, I'm trying not to keep it too boring. But um, basically, yeah. Um, I, you know, around the same community, I was exploited by a black friend who was stealing and stuff like that. Um, Oh, oh yeah 
Okay, so there's another there's another experience where I had I was a business owner myself, and again I had a a, a black person working for me who we I thought we were friends we became friends, and he ended up he was stealing from me the whole time. Other people were trying to warn me of that, and I was just calling them racist. <laughs> and um, but anyway, interesting story is that one day he was being annoying and he was not like doing his work. It was like. And at that point, he could he saw that he was getting, you know, he was leveraging his friendship and get, getting away with things. And I got annoyed. And it just so happened uh, a cop came in to get a meal. And we knew each other. And so I was like, hey, man, do me a favor. This guy's being obnoxious. Can you just go over there, pretend like you're arresting him, just to kind of give him a wake-up call? And we're this is a small community. So the cop's like, okay, sure, whatever. Let's have a good laugh. And he walks over to do that. And my friend immediately puts his hands out behind him like he's being arrested. He thought he was busted for something. And later, the, the cop is like, hey, man, um, you know, he's guilty of something. So finally, it dawned on me, wow, maybe everything, all these people trying to tell him that he's stealing from me, maybe they have a point. And at any rate, so now he invites his cousin over. And uh, being the open-minded idiot, useful idiot that I was being, I was like, okay, let's give him a job. His New York, New Yorker cousin ends up putting a knife to my neck while I'm sitting there in the office um, counting money at the end of the night. He comes in, and without me realizing, I've got now a ni knife to my artery. So give me wow. the money. Yeah. So back then, I thought I was Bruce Lee and Superman combined. And uh, <laughs> Yeah. So I was crazy enough to – I was getting ready to actually counter defend myself like an idiot. I mean, let me tell you guys, in martial arts, you learn to not do that. If somebody got, has a knife at your artery, it's probably not a good idea to do anything crazy. I don't know, unless you're, you're very good at martial arts. Anyways, I, I was ready to take him down. Thankfully, he saw that I was crazy and backed off, and that was the end of it. But, of course, the next day, he never showed up. Obviously, it wasn't just a joke. I mean, yeah, he basically backed up and said, oh, man, I'm just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just playing, just kidding. And But if he was kidding. Why did he stop coming to work? Yeah, it's, uh, he clearly wasn't. But if he knew that you were going to, you know, defend yourself, he probably didn't want to take that risk just in case. Uh, he probably he thought could. that you may have had dirt on him for the next day. That's probably why he avoided yeah. coming in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I hope I hope he, at least he peed himself a little bit when he saw the crazy man look in my eye, but maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so jumping to Columbus, Ohio later in life, you know, Columbus, Ohio is historical with Rosie Parks and the sitting in the back of the bus thing. I experienced uh, years later, decades later, that that city is completely racist, not as racist as Atlanta. Boy, I mean, you talk about racism. I don't have Atlanta in here for some reason, but... When I, I visited Atlanta several times, habitual actually. Um, every time, well, not every time, I'm overstating it, almost every time it seemed like, I would be confronted by some kind of racism, including asking one person to take a picture of me and my friends. And he's like, man, get on my face before I bust your grill. What the? Why? Because of my skin tone. I mean, if that's not racism. I, <laughs> um, so anyway. Yeah, so Columbus, Ohio, basically city bus drivers would, you know, ignore me, just drive on by. Um, wow. Yeah, regularly threatened by thugs, got shot at. Uh, I had a bullet whiz by my ear, and I know that because I've heard descriptions of military people describe that. Yeah. And that yeah, after the fact, and now I know that was, that was a fact, the bullet that whizzed by my ear. Um, so my girlfriend's window was shot out. Um, you know, just all kinds of things. I, it was just bad. In, in fact, I shouldn't drop a name, but Mocab Malone. I, I told him what part of what part of Ohio or what part of Columbus I was in. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I used to live right next to that neighborhood, so he knew exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, basketball courts. Um, you know, I used to go there late night and and play basketball with the brothers all the time. I spent hours on the basketball courts. Um, all my white friends were chased off. One of them even had his arms broken. But I, I, I stuck in it, you know, because I felt like I had some friends there. But eventually they turned on me too. So I 
yeah, basically, <laughs> I guess they saw the crazy man look at my eye too. I mean, in fact, they used to, some of them used to come up to me and ask me, I mean, are you crazy? What's up with you? <laughs> you know? so but they try to steal my car you know some kind of friends i had right they try to steal my car and the cops wouldn't even do anything about it they wouldn't even stick the place out anyway yeah um and then skipping to yeah as far as well let me just say this let me just go ahead and say this last thing so my father later in life came out of retirement because of medical expenses this was um right before the barack hussein obama thing and this is why I was actually a supporter of Barack Hussein and Obama before he became president, because that was his big campaign push. Like he was going to fix the insurance thing. At the time, he wasn't saying he was going to force insurance, but yeah, okay. I was like, okay, yeah, my family's suffering from that. They suffer from that. Cool, great, wonderful. Anyway, so he came out of retirement because of medical expenses, opened up this restaurant. He had to put everything he owned in debt because of it, because of uh, trouble. <laughs> Uh, not Trump, you know, changing the uh, the corporate laws, the, the corporate anyway. So um, then it was 9-11. 9-11 happened when xenophobia took place and people started coming to, the, to his restaurant for a while. So things started falling apart. But if that weren't enough, um, I'm sorry, I'm going off a tangent, but long story short, basically one of the, one of his workers that he employed was a crip, which was a chick that was a, uh, quoted by the Crips, Crips, if you know what that entails. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so she was staking the place out, and at night when he closed the place up, the Crips were actually hang, hiding in the dumpster with uh, semi-automatic weapons that they had stolen and started shooting my father from a distance, completely shattering his femur, completely ripping his leg apart. The, his leg was hanging by, you know, basically arteries and skin, you know, and now he's on the yeah. concrete I called at night, bleeding to death. And they run, in, run up to him to start kicking him and cursing him. Um, now, if that was a robbery attempt, wouldn't it have not been done differently? But obviously, that was a hate crime, right? Cool. So, yeah, thankfully, the, this, the restaurant was literally right next door to a hospital. So, um, and, yeah, there's a, and thankfully, there's a security guard outside of the hospital smoking a cigarette. So he heard the gunshots. And he called the cops, and the cops immediately came over, and they, and he was right next to the hospital, so they quickly got him over there. And the surgeon that operated on my father um, was actually a war veteran, a Vietnam veteran, who was also a doctor uh, in the field in, in Vietnam. And he worked on my father for 12 hours straight, 12 hours straight, putting his leg back together. And this man had called it a miracle that my father survived. He said, he said he'd never seen that kind of damage, and he doesn't know how an artery did not get punctured with all that damage. Wow. That's sad, yeah. man. Yeah, How's well, your dad now? He's, he's passed away a couple of years ago, but th thank you for that. Um, I'm so sorry. That's right. I mean, this, this is life, you know. Um, you know, I feel confident saying that, you know, he's in a good place. It's not my place to say, but I feel confident saying that because he came back to God later in life. And let me just say this about my father. He's a man who's helped. He was, uh, this was, this too was actually in the South. And uh, he helped um, a lot of black people, you know, including the 70s. Back in the 70s, the South was racist. Right? And on through the 80s, the 90s, racism was dead. The KKK was disbanding officially. So, anyway. Um, but yeah, basically, despite all that, that's what happened. But, so, I mean, the man got traumatized. He became a shell of a man. He's someone who helped so many people in his life. I mean, so yeah. many people. Uh, you know, so many people who helped him spend all his time to open up businesses and all that without expecting anything back. In fact, before I had gone to Greece to study, I went around and saw some of these people, and all of them were, like, asking about my father and, you know, thanking, thanking my father through me and, you know, all that he's done for him and all that, which was nice to see. But I made yeah. you proud. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it made me feel good about him. So, but here's the thing. After after that, he went, he became a shell of a man after that trauma. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So despite all that, despite the physical ailment, mean, he had a permanent limp, you know, um, the trauma and all these things. I remember I was actually in seminary at the time, and, I, and we came back and visited for Christmas, and we had the Christmas meal in that same restaurant. 
and there were a couple of black guys out in the parking lot cleaning the parking lot on Christmas Day. And my dad goes mm-hmm. out. This is like months after this. He goes out and he invites him to join us for dinner. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then over a year later, they finally had the hearing for his thing. My father, the man, he's, he goes onto the stand and he looks right at, right at the people who did that stuff to him and ended up losing everything he owned in the process, by the way. Uh, everything he worked mm-hmm. all those decades so hard to, to amass, lost it. But he turned around and he says, I, I forgive you. You know, that must have took some, uh, you know, was he a Christian? Yes. Yeah. So that must have took a lot of faith for him to muster up that that forgiveness. Because, you know, we talk a lot about forgiveness in Christianity. But when it comes to situations like what you and your father was in, when it gets on that deep of a personal scale, you, you can sometimes fall short of that but we have to don't we we have to somehow find that strength to to forgive those who have done awful things to us i mean i for myself my stepdad he was just i I won't go into too much depth but he was a nightmare for me and even to this day he he won't admit or accept anything that you know what i would like to talk about and what i remember and you know it, <clears throat> even though he won't accept it i have had to decide to forgive him for the the, the things he done to me my brothers mm. and what what we went through yeah. and um it's 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 hard but you if you don't do it then as a christian we won't get forgive forgiven for our our wrongdoings yeah, and some no, people yeah. use the yeah but i there's a difference between this and you know like murder and stealing i don't know a a five pound item from a shop and it's like well no sin is sin you know in god's eyes that's that's the way it is you know no commandment was greater than another you know it was all all commandments are the same um you know so it's yes we 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 got to remember to Always forgiven, even in, in these situations. Yeah. You know, um, here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, I can't say that word, but basically, yeah, it, it's a release to be able to forgive others. And, you know, you do it to a degree where it's for your own spiritual well being uh, to forgive them. To a degree, right? But, but not it stops to... haunting you when you do. I've noticed that as well. Well, well that's what I, we, I just interestingly had a, a conversation about confession about that. I know a lot of people that are not Catholic um, really take the mass media view of perspective. Well, confession is this, confession is that, blah, 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 blah. Um, but, yeah, it's... it's, it's it, catharsis i think it's called it's basically a, it's it's for your spiritual healing your well-being when you go f- come to face to face with god through the help of an ordained priest he's there to assist you so you can unleash uh, uh, relieve yourself of that malice that anger that hatred muslims don't get that uh, for example muslims are pure evil and l- unfortunately liberals which have the same spirit as muslims also don't get that they'll never get it because they're so invested in the satanic and the worldly that yeah. it is it escapes them it's an unfortunate but it's, it's, it's pathetic but it's really really sad to see someone that lost yeah yeah and it certainly is yeah and that's what we're covering today we're covering that same spirit people that have been so invested in hatred and malice that they don't like you said you're a besmanov with warning they can't see you know the light right in front of their faces it, no they're lost as jesus warned so let me jump on to greece um yeah yeah exactly um yeah so we've got a a muslim troll who likes to harass me on every stream but uh you know he's not affecting me if he's affecting you guys let me know i'll just go ahead and report him let youtube handle it but uh i just 
I just kind of laugh at what he's saying because it's so stupid. It's, it's funny to me. I can't see it. Is it in the comments? Yeah, yeah. It's oh, yeah. Mamu Dunaz Khan. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, yeah. Mamu, Mamu Dunaz Khan, if you're ever up for a debate and you're ready to leave Islam, uh, go over to my channel, leave a comment and your information. I'll get in touch with you and uh, help you escape that nasty cult that you're in. Yeah, he won't do that. He's a coward. He's, I mean, people that are that are uh, keyboard warriors, as uh, Jim Bob puts it. Yeah, they, they don't, they don't, they don't, they're not, they don't want to speak. They, they just want to like uh, do the false bravado and uh, be insulting and and then cower like a little girl. He'll never yeah. come out. Of show. Just shows they're they're great representations of the religion of peace, aren't they? Yeah, the religion yeah. of of deceit, of lies. Yeah. And and uh, absolute, I mean, they're yeah, basically vermin, rats, like rats. When the light comes on, they scatter. Well, when you follow a Peter Peter Fall rapist warlord, you're not gonna uh, <laughs> gonna be that much far from them yourselves, are you? Mm. Yeah, and here's a good example. I mean, he's running around threatening a, a little woman. Like, oh, that's really brave. That's how 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 holy of you how 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 wonderful is your your cult when you're running <laughs> around harassing a woman maybe he's the maybe he's the mcd <laughs> he, well, he seems perfect if he's harassing women he's got his lamb down to a t yeah, anyway right. pay, let's pay him no attention unless he wants to leave his lamb and come to the truth yeah um, so yeah, so basically getting back to the whole Euro bashing thing, this is something that I also address It's not so much that I, yeah, I am concerned about me and my people, of course, but I'm really concerned about the end game, you know, of their attacking Christ specifically and therefore his followers. That's going to happen, you know, whether we like it or not. But in the meantime, we can still combat it. We can still try to free others from it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's all I'll say. I'll say about that. I'll just keep moving. I, I've talked about this uh, at, at length at other streams. So, okay, so let's get to Islam right on cue. Um, raising heads. Um, yeah, yeah so I was that's the Ethiopians. Hmm. Yeah, I was hoping that uh, Mutaz would be here. I guess he's not going to be here. Huh. So, but basically. This is actually in their in their belief systems is explicitly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading, this uh, thing. Someone said my um my the, my comments or my chat is spammed. What does that mean? I don't know. Don't know what that is. Uh, they're talking about the stream. Like I, I guess uh, what they'll do sometimes is they'll try to be so offensive that YouTube will take the stream down because they're being offensive. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And that's why you got to be careful about who you give your uh, your links out to and add to your um, your live streams because they'll, I mean, I've seen like porn, like some, like I think Thaddeus was one of them. They, he, he used to let him go straight to the thing, but then they would start showing porn so they can take down his channel. You know, <laughs> I mean, they're just, uh, I mean, it, it's just so stupid and evil. It's, it's, it's comical. It's hard not to laugh at it. <laughs> well, Mamu Dunaz Khan, you're here at the perfect time. Maybe you can come and defend your uh, pedophile, rapist, racist, warlord of a prophet. And uh, I mean, if not, then go away and do something, something better. I don't know. Go, <laughs> go troll someone else, or go watch some of the rubbish that Muhammad Ajab speaks. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, please tell him that I accept his challenge again. <laughs> yeah, and they're racist too. So I'm glad he's here. I mean, it's perfect. He's he's showing just how deplorable they are. But yeah, let's let's talk about just how racist they are too. These Muslims that the left is showing solidarity with. You know, the, these slave owners. They still have slavery to this day, amongst all these long list of things that we we'll, we we'll continue to expose too, along with mass media. Yep. But Sahih al Bukhari, 7142, book 93, hadith 6, says, Allah's messenger said, 
you should listen to and obey your ruler, even if he was Ethiopian, black. Slave whose head looks like a raisin. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but what the? I mean, that sounds like a KKK comic book from, you know, the 1950s. Who says that? Call, calling, you know, black people raisin heads and slaves. I mean, who does that? Yeah. Muslims. Muslims. Long story short, yeah. The, 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 the religion of peace. All right, so let me, let's look at the other one. The, um, okay, this one's kind of racist too. It's not kind of, actually it is, what am I saying? Okay, so this is uh, Hassan, so mid-grade, but still very, very vetted. Hassan is not, it's not discredited at all. Even, even Dave is a, Dave's a, um, No hadith actually is. If his if yeah. class has a hadith, even if it's Daif, um, because it's actually been through the Islam school of thought, and it's been through, it would have been tested so many times. So I, I was watching um, a thing about how they cl uh, class a piece of scripture, a hadith. And even if it's got a weak chain or a weak narration, they because it is classed as a hadith, it's still classed as um, proof. So no matter what they say, you usually find with people like Muhammad Ijab and Ali Dawa and Hamza, Whenever they get caught out on verses in Sahih Al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, they'll say they'll use they'll use those as um, ways to kind of like I don't know argue the the case for Islam. But when it comes to um, some of the verses like what we're talking about now, when you expose them to them, they say, even though the, they're graded Sahih, which is one of the strongest um hadiths they so say um they and has the best chain they'll even turn around and say oh yeah but this verse uh, um hasn't been uh you know has a weak thing because of this and and they come up with so many excuses as to like even the daif hadiths they say oh no that's the, it's weak we can't use it but they'll use the same verses there too right. to kind of fight the case for islam so this one guy, he he thought he'd uh, basically go out and just prove that any hadith, even if it's daif, that's his daif grade, it is a genuine hadith. And it's been through so many years of study and so many years of um, people looking at it from Islam, Islamic scholars. For them to even class it as a hadith, it has to go through so many circles of people. So it, it don't, I, with the gradings and stuff, it doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't. Yeah. And what also is crazy, keeping in the same discussion, so to speak, is how they continue to claim that the, the Bible has been corrupted, <laughs> which is funny. People yeah. with the Quran, uh, the, the one that's been burned and eaten by sheep and so on and so forth, uh, <laughs> ab abrogated and on and on. Yeah, they're saying the Bible's corrupted. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, they'll say it's corrupted, but then they'll still refer to their Bible to make arguments. I mean, which is it? Is it corrupted or or is it? Well, they say the Quran perfect, yet there's so many contradictions, so many uh, grammatical errors in it. There, it's unreal. Uh, if it was supposed to be from God, then wow. Yeah. Let, let's just put it this way. We know it's a load of rubbish. Right, long story <laughs> short, and then some. I mean, if only, if only were that, that the problem. But and it's third hand at best. I'm sorry. The the Quran is third hand at best. Third hand. You know, it wasn't third hand. Yeah, no, obviously it was a uh, Uthman who written the Quran, oh, and okay. they they claim that it was orally transmitted. But even then, most of the people that um, knew the Quran orally were killed in battle. So <laughs> there was there, and there was a lot of people. There was things that Satan added verses to the Quran, and God removed Allah removed them, and then uh, there, there was also all sorts of controversies with the Quran. There's so many arguments about it. it you know, Doctor J Smith as well. He was talking about yesterday. He's great with stuff like this. Um, he he knows that, and there's thirty. Like I said, there's thirty three versions of the Quran. 
and not different translations. There's 33 different with different verses, so and different meanings. Yeah, it was actually hard to touch that was exposed that. I mean, she was a yeah, one, and yeah. well, she she worked with uh Jay Smith, Dr. Jay Smith, to to do that. He he knew all that back in the 80s. Oh, did he, he was okay. exposing that, yeah, yeah. Wow. But um, yeah, Hatun learned from him. He's he's a brilliant scholar, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I mean that's what I was gonna say. That's why they hate her because she's exposing the fact you, she was bringing uh, to Speaker's Corner samples of those contradictions, and man, did they hate her? <laughs> oh, can I can I quickly add something whilst we're on this topic of Islam, um, yeah. guys? If there's anyone watching here that's an apostate of Islam, um. Please subscribe to my channel and leave your information because I'm looking to do some um, discussions and some interviews on live on my YouTube. You can do it anonymously or you can do it with your own YouTube channels. It's entirely up to you, but I'm looking to bring people on to talk about their journeys of apostasy. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you could do that, that'd be great. Yeah, the link is in the description. Okay. Um, all right, so yeah, getting back to how racist Islam is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mishkat al Masabi, all right, 119. Book one, Hadith 112. Abad Darda reported God's messenger as saying, God created Adam when he created him and struck his right shoulder and brought forth his offspring, white like small ants. And he struck his left shoulder and brought forth his offspring black as though they were charcoal. Then he said to the party on his right, to paradise. And I do not care. In other words, the white people are going to heaven. And he said to the party in his left shoulder, to hell. And I do not care. In other words, the black people are going to hell. <laughs> Does it get much more racist than that? No, no he creates them just to send them to hell. Like, is, <laughs> if this is not a religion of Satan, what is it? Yeah, and then we have uh, Sahih Muslim 3901, where, um, you know, the, the black slave is half the value of a white slave. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's, that's important if you're in slave trading, like the Muslims still are. Um, it was two for, two for one, wasn't it? Back, in, yeah. back then, well, still is. That's disgusting, man. And uh, and they're the worst of all people. That's uh, Natab Al Harif. And uh, you know they're viewed as kafir and human. I mean, it just it just goes on. You'll know them by the fruits. If you don't want to look at their own scriptures and, and make the arguments, well, they don't do that anymore. No, just look at what what current. Never mind all throughout history what they've done, but what they're still doing um, as uh, current events. Okay. The Ottoman Empire as well. They didn't allow black people um, in the Ottoman Empire to serve for them. Mm, I, I heard know that. that. Sorry. I I I know that as well. That's a, a historic a documentary I watched. And they, they refuse to let black people in uh, the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that they actually castrated only the black slaves, not the white ones. You know, wow. Yeah. That's, 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 I mean. So, yeah, because they call them uh, eunuchs, was it? Yeah, turned them into eunuchs. Yeah, and it wasn't that uncommon for ancient cultures that had slaves to convert them to eunuchs. I'm not saying all of them did, but they weren't the only ones to do it. But in this case, the Ottomans literally only castrated the blacks not the whites yeah and they did a uh, female genital mutilation to the black women as well you talking about the slaves or just in general just in general um yeah, yeah so that you can enjoy sexual intercourse yeah i mean anyway <laughs> Still happens today. that's a whole other subject but yeah i mean yeah we, anyway yeah let's like, get up on the tangent i mean islam We'll continue to cover, cover these things, but it is just, I don't know, what do you call it? Not, let's call it what it is, evil. It's, it's pure evil. That's why it's so stupid. It's just evil. It makes no sense. Okay, so let's go back to now um, Hollywood and this whole white-black thing in um, America. 
um, the new world, <laughs> let's call it that. So there is a historical film, which is really interesting. It's been brought up in academic circles lately for being the cornerstone of reviving the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK, around the turn of the 20th century. Yeah. So this film came out in 2015. Um, and yeah, when you look at it, it's a pure propaganda piece. It's, uh, it's quite crazy. So it's, it's a two-parter. The first part of it is actually about the events leading up to the Civil War, the Civil War, and the, even the assassination of uh, Abraham Lincoln. And then the, the second part is the post-war, the rebuilding of the South. So there, all of a sudden, the Ku Klux Klan gets introduced and is, um, is being revived. Okay. So, yeah, the film is actually being accredited these days, like I said, by academics as reviving the Ku Klux Klan in the early 1900s, early 20th century. If that's true or not, I'm not sure, but that's why it's such a significant film. So let's take a look at some, some production, some facts about the making of the movie, the behind the scenes stuff that nobody is really talking about. Okay. So it's based on a 1905 Thomas Dixon novel, The Klansman. It has a deep, so, so some of the production values is something that made, it is what made it popular back then. It was also uh, one of the first feature films. It was a three hour long film. You can find it online on YouTube for free. A couple of different channels, in fact. But the Klansman. If, uh, no, no, the... Um, the Birth of a Nation. It's called The Birth oh, of a Nation. Birth, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. 1915. Okay. okay, there's two versions. We'll, we'll briefly touch on both of those. The first version is in 1915, the one we're talking about now. Recently, 101 years later, in 2016, they did The Birth of a Nation again, and we'll address that too. But right now I'm talking about the 1915 version. Okay, so back then it was really popular. Again, it was one of the first feature films. In 1915, um, we could talk about early film, actually. I might, be, I might do a stream on that. But there was basically what you had is like maybe 10-minute segments of weird, different things being recorded. So it wasn't really, you know, or little shorts, you know, with very, like a very a small sequence or two put together. So it wasn't very extensive. But then this came along, this propaganda piece, and it was three hours long, two-parter. So that was a big deal. Yeah. But also some of the uh, the filmmaking effects that he used was really rev revolutionary in his time. Like it was, he did some things for the first time. So that's what he was known for. Um, the director D. W. Griffith, that is. And you can look at his other films too to get some idea of who he is and all that. But we've got some interesting points in that. But as far as the movie goes, uh, deep focus photography was introduced. That was like. Let's call it the panoramic view. He was the one who introduced that in the film industry. The close-ups, which we all know. Um, jump cuts. Jump cuts is like uh, basically going from one scene to the next and editing. Do you mind muting, muting your mic? There's feedback and echo. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. So jump cuts is basically when you're um, going from one scene to the other and editing, and you make it look natural. like you're just showing the same action when that's not actually the case. So he, he was introduced that and some other special effects. The movie was over 1500 shots and the average back then was only a hundred shots per movie. So there was a, there was a lot of filming going on, but even though there was a script, he actually kept the continuity in his mind, basically how the story is going to go. Uh, he kind of kept it a secret, and now we can see why. It was a propaganda piece. It's probably why he kept it a secret. <laughs> but it's quite profound. It shows that this guy was also a mad genius. You know, it was that type. Um, he also discovered uh, Lionel Barrymore, which is the uncle of Drew Barrymore. The Barrymore the Barrymores are Hollywood elites royalty, if you didn't know that. Um in fact, I've done a video in one of uh, his uh, early movies. Uh, this uh, 
the birth of a nation had a budget of one hundred and ten thousand dollars in 1915 that's a ton of money that's like millions um which doesn't sound like much these days but for a film early on that doesn't have you know cgi and all these other crazy things going on that's a lot of money and again it was it was actually the first hollywood blockbuster of its time which which secured the fact that full length these long movies will now be a popular thing and it had three million viewers in fact a lot of people want to go watch it okay in the movie the content blacks are portrayed as troubling sex fiends lusting after white women and the kkk or the antebellum south as heroes um and I, like I said, in 1870s, the KKK died out. By the way, um, W.J. Simmons, he was he's actually someone who promoted Freemasonry. He did a cross-burning in Georgia. All right. Um, he was a credit for reviving the KKK. But if you look into it, the very origin of the Ku Klux Klan, it's actually Albert Pike, P-Y-K-E. I encourage people to look into that name. And that is a Scottish Rite. He was a leader of the Scottish Rite, and he was the one who originally established the Ku Klux Klan. Um, but you should know that, judging by the fruits, if someone's burning a cross, they're not Christian. So that's mass media nonsense. That's Freemasons trying to a hijack just like the the muslims do to try to hijack christianity and undermine it yeah sorry i'm just reading these uh, uh comments um the last thing i want to point out it's interesting that even though this uh this movie was uh budgeted and promoted by freemasons Freemasons were also protesting it publicly. And as we've seen recently, the whole conflict, like uh, making something controversial, actually advertises it. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and the, the LA, New York, and Boston protests were aided by the double, NAACP, it goes for that far back, but also led by Harvard Trotter, Trotter, T R O T T E R who was a member of the Phi Beta Kappa, which is a Masonic um, organization, a university. I've heard about, yeah, I've heard about one. So isn't it interesting that the Freemasons created this film, but the Freemasons also were complaining about it? Just to no, hype it up. To give it, uh, to get attention on both sides. Any, yeah. any attention is good attention. Yeah. Um, it, it, that's just the number one rule when it comes to if you want to make something known. Um, even if you you want people talk to get people talking, you must have to address both sides of the party. Yeah, basically, I complete completely agree with you a thousand percent. I mean, Howard Stern made an entire career off of doing just that, being a shock jock. Yeah. So looking at the next stream real quick, just uh, I, I kind of reduce this to a couple of streams just so you can guys can kind of watch. So I'm not going to drag us through an entire uh, detailed thing of a three hour movie that, to be honest with you, I mean, it was torture to watch us. Uh, Amir Zidane said he watches twice. <laughs> so I feel bad for the guy. Um, sorry, I'm laughing, but that, that had to be intense. That had to be torture. Um, yeah, but anyway, so long story short, in these images, you can see how um, early on, yeah, even the union, I will say this much. As far as uh, the movie portraying the celebration of the KKK and the rebuilding of the South in that way, in the beginning of the movie, the union army was also being portrayed as celebratory. So then there was that too. Um, but all in all, I've got to say, especially where in the middle you've got the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. You've got to wonder uh, about all that. I mean, this was likely a propaganda piece that was pushing for um, the revival of the KKK war, just, you know, all this divisive divisiveness that we're seeing now through BLM and all that. 
Um, but would yeah. You, sorry. sorry. I, 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 I would put, well, actually, no, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'll leave that. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say something and I thought about it and I thought, no, no, that's wrong. <laughs> right. I'm wrong. No there. Yeah, no worries. All right. So you'll see in this screenshot here that they actually had black actors, but the major roles were actually done by white actors in blackface. Like they put like this charcoal or something on their faces. So that's kind of crazy. And in the scene you see on the right, it's a white guy in blackface who's playing like some sinister guy who's like checking out a white woman in the woods and he's getting ready to uh, to rape her. And she's like threatening, well, I'm going to jump off this cliff if you don't leave me alone. It's like really, really crazy. Pretty intense. It's not, yeah, it's not nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's interesting enough, here we are now in the 21st century after all these things, NAACP, the United Negro College Fund, the, you know, the social security benefits, the extra scholarships, the uh, making sure you get a job if you're black uh, thing, the affirmative action stuff. Um, yeah, the, the lawsuits, just because you're black, you get extra lawsuits and money just because of your skin tone, all these things. We what and the black president, by the way, and, uh, and black actors and black singers and black rich people, all, all the, all this is success stories. Instead yeah. of, you know, saying thank you, they were led to basically hate white people for being oppressed in the 21st century, which is insane. They're even giving handouts, aren't they now? Like for, uh, I can't remember what one of it was. Uh, uh, they did it here. Wow. So, yeah, there you go. I mean, it's Windrush scandal. That was it. It's called the Windrush scandal. Uh, it's basically the Windrush generation when they got um, Caribbeans to come over to help. Um, they class it as slavery, and basically they've got a load of money from the government, um, from churches. They've just sued, actually. They've just sued the Church of England for £8 billion. Pounds. Which is, I don't know, what, $10 billion or something like that, which basically means the Church of England is screwed. Bankrupt, exactly. That's, thank you very much. And that's what I've been saying all along. This yeah. is not about so much black and white. It is a, about an affront to Jesus Christ himself and his church, his followers. And there you go. Yeah. That's a perfect example. Bankrupt the church so they can't operate. Voila. That's it. There, hoop, there it is, as the song used to go. Hoop, there it is. <laughs> and of course, the Church of England is tied with the Roman Catholic Church because the Church of England basically, even though it broke away from the Catholic Church, they still, uh, it's like most Protestant sects, they still use the Catholic teaching. So it's um, when they, like the Apostles' Creed, and they, when, they, when they proclaim that, they basically say that we are part of the catholic church so the money will most probably come from the catholic sect and if that happens then <laughs> both of them are screwed so that will be the the catholic church and the church of england basically wow a just, yeah just completely destroyed oh. which which will then mean the selling of churches and what happens to churches when they get sold who buys them islam and then they get turned into mosques and this a and this is a common thing i think it was last year alone i think there was a thousand churches bought by um islam in the uk just in one year and they were turned into um mosques and there was a lot of, a lot of, uh, let's just say, destruction that was ve broadcasted very well. Mm. No one moaned about it, and people were people who were there, like smashing the stained glass windows and stuff, were putting up Palestinian flags on top of the roof and changing the flags for Great Britain. They were they were swapping them with uh, Palestine flags and Pakistan flags and Turkey flags and stuff like that, putting up Islamic flags. Yep, that's if that's not ethnic cleansing, I don't know what is. <laughs> Long no. story short, yeah, or in the anti-Christian behavior, evidently. Definitely. I'll just so, go on uh, mute a second because I'm just heading yeah. outside, so but I'm still no listening. Yeah, no worries. All right, so yeah, I was just about to talk about how now back in the 21st century, 
essentially this uh, birth of a nation spirit has now become BLM, the whole rise up thing that we we're talking about earlier, Black Lives Matter, as if not all lives matter. And in those, in those vain, that vain rhetoric, they weaponized a certain group of people to attack everyone else and what they're calling, they should call it the second summer of love, um, which the original summer of love was full of Satanism too, by the way, that's no coincidence. Um, yeah, and so basically they destroyed not only a nation, uh, followed by the lockdown, which finished the job, but it, that spread worldwide. And even in places that this was not even an issue, people were behaving in that same way, using the same rhetoric, same moniker. That's, again, no coincidence. That's the agenda, the ultimate agenda of they, them, legion. And yes, some of them, they, them will say, yes, we're legion. It is to destroy society, to promote chaos, to depopulate the planet, to put nature above people, and to hate on Jesus Christ and his followers. So that brings us to this film, the 2016, The Birth of a Nation, the same name, 101 years later. And it opens up with, lo and behold, sensationalizing, glamorizing voodoo, the occult. The main character is brought into this uh, medicine man, and they're all doing their voodoo chants, and they're around in a circle around a fire, and he's given some kind of voodoo spell and a, a voodoo token. Um, and so... Yeah, basically, Christianity is portrayed throughout the movie, but portrayed in very Hollywood fashion, in a negative light. And throughout the movie, the main character goes around bashing violently and blood gore, bloodthirst, uh, white people. Now, according to the Internet, this is based on a historical event, uh, this uh, uprising of some blacks that killed all these white people. Um but here we are now in the 21st century, rehashing that, and in this fashion, by promoting paganism and undermining Christianity and appealing to the passions of malice and anger and revenge of something that happened over a century ago. And people that have more benefits than white people. That's the reality. If you're raised in America, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For example, uh, when I was down and out on my luck, I went and swallowed my pride and reached out for help to the government. It's and the I same here. Yeah, I literally was turned away by an Asian woman, and she was laughing and said, I'm sorry, you're a white man. You have no children. You're not going to get any help. Literally, explicitly, that's what she said. Yeah, she so said, go get a job, basically. Get out of here, white man. So what do you do with that? And that's the same thing that I had to face with scholarships. I mean, I was an academic standout. In fact, I was invited to um, a, a Masonic Ward myself because of my achievements academically. Uh, I did finally win a scholarship. But in applying scholarships, literally, I would say three-fourths of them, 75% of them, maybe more. Either they had to be a single mother or a black person. Now, is that not degrading society? They're rewarding people for being subpar, for having broken homes, and for race, and for gender, by the way. Uh, again, this was single mothers, not single fathers, the scholarships. So because I was a man, I was white, I was excluded from that category. And this was decades ago, decades ago. If you see, when it comes to Christianity and attack of Christianity, if you see No Intelligence Allowed by Ben Stein, which I'm not a big fan of this concept, to me they're more alluding to a Masonic uh, almighty architect, Jabulan. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. At any rate, he's at least talking about in depth about how this attack on Christians and how they've been ostracized in professional fields, uh, professional in significant fields, for not only years now, but decades now. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a real eye-opener for those who still have any doubt that's happening somehow. 
Okay, that's all I really want to say about the movie. I'm not going to sit there and portray any images uh, on and on about how white people are getting bashed in by black people. That's just disturbing. But uh, it's I will. As well. Sorry? It's boring as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, again, we're, we're living it. That, that's the whole goal. Again, it's not just blacks against whites. It's not just women against uh, men. It's not just homosexuals or whatever you want to call them against Christians. And they've been weaponized too recently, by the way. It's just uh, anything and everyone against everyone. It's just absolute chaos. And that's, that is the agenda. I mean, and, and of course, in spirit, it's anti-Christian, as we said repeatedly. We're all God's children. But in their eyes, they want to destroy that too. It just makes you think, like, why in our, you know, the Christian leaders, they need to be doing a lot more now. You know, it's like, uh, you know, obviously for m myself and you, you know, we don't agree with the Pope anyway. But if you're going to have someone like a Pope, then why on earth is he just saying nothing? Why, why, why doesn't he have a say or a, a big platform where he can talk about things like this? You know, we have to, it, you know, it's, it's very obvious to just the normal right. Christian that this is happening. They, even non-Christians, they can see it. They can see it clearly. I mean, there's people talking like on behalf of Christians now in the UK that have got podcasts. They're atheists, yet they're saying they're talking about how Christianity is under attack by the left and Islam hand in hand. And, you know, they're they're basically talking, saying, although I'm not a Christian, I know that this land was built on Christian values. And because of that, you know, we need to protect those values. And no one's talking about protecting those values or anything like it. At least they're not allowed to publicly. I mean, you can say on the Internet, but on the Internet, not only do we have a limited audience, but we're constantly being censored for absurd reasons. So here's a, a comic book. Here's a, It's called The Splash Page. This is actually two pages. Um, the second and third page on the first volume, the first comic book that I did as a, um, a treatment. I did an entire series back in 2017. I'd completed it. Um, warning about where society was heading. This was before BLM, before a January 6th insurrection, quote unquote insurrection, before all these things, before the Washington Redskins logo scandal and all this, you know, liberals running around saying we are on the land of the Lakota, we are on the land of the Cheyenne and all these things. Um, I was trying to warn people, look, this is where we're going. Please be careful, all right? And what I called this certain subplot of this comic book series was the Civil Race War. Now, by the way, since I'm talking about this, I'm still looking for artists to team up with. It came close a few times, but people keep bowing out because it takes a lot of time to put something like this together, a lot of resources. So, uh, But I still want to do it, even though now it's reactionary instead of forewarning because I still know it has value. I even in this comic book, it ends with, uh, interestingly enough, it ends with an uh, alien race coming uh, that was kept secret by the U.S. government, and they come out uh, to basically destroy society. I want, that's all I want to say about that plot. There's more to it. But isn't that what they were just recently pushing? You know, the aliens are real, and they're going to they're gonna do this and that, and they're the reason for everything? I even warned about that. So anyway, um, let me go back to, okay, let me go back to the other one. Okay, so in the movie theaters now, there's a movie called Civil War, all right? Um, you may have not see, may have seen it, may have heard about it. If you don't go see it, good for you. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry, you, you watched it? On. I'm sorry, what? Oh, I think I, we just lost you again. Um, yeah, so yeah, I don't know if you can hear me now, Chris, apologize, but I think we've lost you. Try rebooting or something. At any rate, yeah, so basically, um, it's basically, yeah, it's a propaganda piece that is doing what, what I've warned about. We've also talked about last week's stream about the, what is it, the American... Magical Negro, Society of Magical Negroes, 
which was another app, absolute propaganda piece created to incite people, to get them mad so they can hate each other, especially blacks against whites, but vice versa too. But even if you don't go watch that movie, which not many people with that title would, they've already pissed people off with the title. Negroes? I mean, really. So they're already pissing off black people just, just by the title. They're very crafty. And now Civil War, all right? They're trying to lure you in. Um, and then this entire thing is a, is a propaganda piece. Like, it's, it's just exactly that. It's just going on and on about trying to um, portray people in a certain way, hyping up both stereotypes or all stereotypes, I should say, and trying to get everyone angry and incited. It's absolute chaos. And again, it's the Willie Lynch letters. I control the chaos. Fabricate a difference. Blow it up. Make it worse than what it actually seems. Get people angry and envious and insecure. And then they'll attack each other, and you can control them that way. And that also, of course, fits into their de depopulation agenda, like the Georgia Guidestones was saying, that suspiciously were done away with. So, yeah, we lost uh, Christian Apologist. Bummer. He was just about to say Civil War. I guess we'll get back to that when he gets when he comes back. Um, yeah, so let's talk about, let's kind of sort of wrap things up. I do have some videos and things that I want to share with you guys and close things off on a positive note, especially on Jesus Christos Nika. Jesus Christ is victorious. I've heard in certain circles it being said, neither Jew nor Greek. Now, unfortunately, some of those say that in a wrong spirit, but may that be blessed. But then there is also the wondrous propaganda of how they use certain words, like we mentioned throughout the stream, equality, inclusion, open-minded, tolerance, equity. I mean, all those people that are using these things are obviously going towards the opposite agenda, obviously have the anti-Christian spirit. And we know that through their fruits now. Anyone who had any questions about it before, surely by now, unless they're completely brainwashed like Yuri Bezmanov warned, surely by now they um, at least see it even if they're being dishonest with others or even with themselves. And that's the last part. We need to at least be honest with ourselves. So what I have here on the bottom right, this guy who's doing, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing, but it's just so silly. Some people are just, I don't know what words you would use to describe them, but he's doing the Vulcan Star Trek uh, live long and prosper gesture, <laughs> which is absurd. Um, but also one of their leaders, uh, prominent leaders, had made the claim that white people are trying to go to Africa to steal the vibranium. For those who are not familiar, vibranium is a fictional element created by uh, Jews, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and all that, where this uh, advanced society, let's say, in Africa, not really so much advanced, they weren't actually portrayed advanced in the comic books, but in the movies they were. But at any rate, they had access to this vibranium, which um, gave them the ability to have this like special metal that couldn't be destroyed. And that's what Captain America's shield, which interestingly enough has a pentagram on it, it was made out of. It's made out of vibranium. So this guy was literally going around saying, hey, the white people are trying to steal our vibranium. <laughs> um, I mean, and there's that... <laughs> Black Panther rhetoric there, Wakanda forever, which which took, caught fire. And it's insane. It's completely fascist. It's completely insane. But regardless of how insane, how fictional, how silly it is, there are people, like I said from the beginning, that will buy into it. In fact, like I said, the more you're exposed to this, the more likely it will be that you will succumb to it. It's even if you know it, I think it was, the number was officially somewhere around 67%. Statistically speaking, scientific research says they will still succumb to, to brainwashing, even if you're aware of it. So that's where we're, where, where we're dealt with today. The bottom line, though, is that, I mean, Jesus Christ, despite all these antics, is ought to be victorious, but we need to remain focused on Christ. Once we do that, we know that and we'll acknowledge to ourselves and to others, that we are all children of God. 
Welcome back. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> the signal no is terrible. No worries. Should I should I talk about uh, the Civil War? Did you have something to say on that or or, or not? No, it's uh, it's okay. All right. You can con continue. Oh uh, yeah, I was just wrapping up. So okay, okay. All right. Um. So all right. So let me let me read this little insert for me. Malcolm X, as I learned about his choosing to leave the nation of Islam after a Hajj. So Malcolm X stopped being a Muslim after go, doing a Hajj. Let that sink in. Again, this is an internet source. I don't know how vetted it is, but I think I got it from That's, something. I, Hajj is I, supposed to en enlighten someone, if anything. That's, that's, right. that's amazing. Well, that's the thing. Maybe it did enlighten him. That's the whole thing. It enlightened him, and he's like, oh, man, what am I doing with this crap? I, I'm out of here. Now, I usually, when I go, go to sources, I try to make it a point to, to do use at least, quote, unquote, vetted sources like NBC, CNN, or whatever, vetted source. So this is likely from a vetted source. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you. I can't remember. I only maybe, the Zam, maybe the Zam Zam water didn't work when he, when he drank it <laughs> when he was there. Maybe, maybe he got the uh, turtles, the, uh, the shites really bad. So I'm out of here. This, this place stuff is a joke. Yeah. So his reasoning appeared sound and scholarly at the time. I did not look more into what he, what he must have found. I have always found the topic of racism repugnant. Beneath that of people who have any humanity. Okay. Yeah, I do remember this. This was actually an art, uh, a news article that was reporting this. So. This is relatively vetted. Um, yeah, so before we go, let me share a couple of things with you guys. I did want to open with a video, which I failed to do. But at any rate, let me just go ahead and share this instead to kind of put things into perspective for us. All right, can you guys see that? No. All right, let me try this. I can only see the same right, screen. Let, yeah, let me let me stop sharing that. Okay, there we go. Oops. Okay. All right. Now, sorry about that, guys. Rookie mistakes. All right, here we go. All right. Now, can you see it? Should I make it bigger? Something's come up, yeah. All right. That's about as big as I can make it. If I go any bigger, you won't be able to see the whole screen. Sorry about and that. And then the clip ended with an audible phrase, teaching a black Jesus. Okay, here we go. Oh, come on, man. A black Jesus in Russian. Let's try that again. And then the clip ended with an audible phrase, the teaching of black Jesus in Russian which appears to be said by Putin in the video on TikTok. So this is fascinating. Actually, I didn't get into this. Do you understand, everyone, what's being said here? It's not just that the voiceover was not accurate as far as what was being said there, but the... A, the, the oh, God. I got the wrong video up somehow. I was talking about the black Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, there was a, another icon, one of these these fools. They had the, the Theotokos and all that. This is what happens with text shenanigans, man. I tried to enlarge, and then it got to the last video, and then I refreshed, and I won't let me go back to the original video. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to share that with you guys, and that's so annoying. I hate technology. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, basically look at his shorts. You'll see, if you see an icon of the Theotokos in black, that's the one I was trying to share with you guys. They're one of these uh, Hebrew Israelites who are extremely racist towards everyone, including each other, of course. Oh, they're um, a nightmare, and they, they they basically sing the verses, don't they? Yeah, it's just oh, it's just <laughs> funny guys. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess it is funny in one way. And then there's that. Let me show you another incident, and I don't want to. Oh, God. Let me click out of all these things. Uh, I really need two screens. This is so frustrating. Why is this? Okay. 
Here we go. Finally. You got to do like a thousand clicks just to share something too. This is the reason I didn't like StreamYard, but it was my best option at the time. At any rate, all right, let's take a look at this. Hmm. Volume. Oh, volume. Here we go. But it didn't end there. Joining me now is Daniel Cafaro Hill, who's the nephew of the woman attacked. Daniel, first, um, a skull fracture, uh, especially in your late 60s. This is serious. How is your aunt doing? She's making a recovery. We just visit her in the hospital. She's able to speak to us a little bit. She still cannot put on full sentences or anything like that. She suffered a Oops. skull fracture, and it's just, it's been, the whole okay, so family has came from out of state to see her. It's just, she's been, it seems like the suspect was up the block watching her. And as soon as, um, obviously, she stepped away from the car, when she realized right. she didn't have her purse and her keys. He then stole the car, and she had walked home where her daughter called 911. She was taken in an ambulance at the hospital. Yeah. Does she, do, do, do we have a description of this suspect? Can't really tell in this video or any leads, Daniel. Um. Apparently, the NYPD oh, did pull oh, a God. fingerprint off of the vehicle today. The detectives just visited oh, us. They have a good idea of who it might be, they say, but they didn't give us any up further. Check this out. So he's running Was up to her from behind. Man? Yeah, she's, uh, and then he just pushes her. I mean, why is this necessary? If you're trying to rob a woman with a purse, why is that necessary? So can't just, yeah, can't you just grab her bag like any purse snatcher? So she's walking up to a Greek Orthodox church, and that happens. You tell me, is that a robbery or is that a hate crime? That's both. Yeah, well, if it's a robbery, yeah, it's both. But if it's a robbery, you just snatch the purse. That's what we call them purse snatchers. But this guy yeah. wanted to make sure to push her down the stairs. Okay. It's disgusting. So, yeah, I mean, I got to wonder if he's Muslim. <laughs> like the guy before who was in here, Kuzma Shumashaha, whatever his name was, he was over here, you know, talking about Hatuna, Hatuna Tosh and, you know, <laughs> uh, relishing, you know, her, her torture. That's the spirit these demons do these things. And that's the same thing with the, with the, with the liberals and the brainwashed who hate on men, who hate on whites, who hate on Christians, who hate on, you know, everyone and everything, including themselves. That's the same spirit. That's the stuff that we got to get away from. Yep. And, one way we can do that is by unplugging, <laughs> but that's not enough. In itself, that's not enough. You have to, because now they've been brainwashing us, they've been controlling our brain to, to be this way, to incite us. We've got to, and they've supplanted Christ with this evil. To cut the evil off is not enough. We've got to fill back in. We've got to do that healing through Christ. So again, I know this is crazy. It's counterintuitive for a streamer to be doing this, but uh, that's what I call my audience. One, unplug. Two, turn to Christ. Remain Christ-centered to the very end. Praying unceasingly. Definitely. Let me show. Yeah. Okay, should I show more stuff? I mean, we have. You know, yeah, I sure. Show from, okay, cool. So let me show this one because I've got stuff from Paul Self. He actually was kind enough to share a, a book chapter with me. Um, yeah, I should do that. That, that was really cool. Um, oh, come on. Sorry. I'm going to go around with controls again. Click, 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 click. All right. Okay. Yeah, I see that, right? Yeah. Okay. We have to have a rebel, uh, a revolution in the church. We need people who are not afraid to die. This is one of my favorite the people, church. by the way. Just, we have to. We have no choice. Amen. Agreed. Yeah. Amen. Agreed. Amen. All right, brother Paul. This last story is is uh, kind of puts it all together. It's out of Africa, Nigeria. Crux now. Oh, oh, by the way, I just watched the news <laughs> from England. You know, they got sick and tired of the Muslims trying to take over their nation. 
they finally realize that they have to get up, work, and do something concerning this Islamic crap. We have to do the same. You know, do yeah. not vote for Jolo Lolo Bodon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Jolo Bodon. I know who that is. <laughs> I know. That's an actual person. Jolo Lolo Bodon, a... yeah? Oh, wow. I didn't know I realized that was a real yeah. person. <laughs> That's a real name. <laughs> All right, Paul. Lynn, we're running out, right. okay. out of time. Let's move um, on. Okay. okay, let me read this story. Uh, Crux now reported that on March 9th, nearly 300 school children were abducted from their school in northwest Nigeria's Kaduna State. Uh, Sunday, March 24th, more than two weeks after the children were seized from their school, those 300 school children were released. A Nigerian Catholic priest, Father Moses Ladarpuhu, is bringing attention to some of what's being hidden in respect to these kidnappings in Nigeria. The go he says the government has allowed an option to marry off freed Boko Haram hostages to their abductors. This was in reaction to 20 Chibuk girls who had regained their freedom after 10 years in Boko Haram captivity. And they are now being forced to marry the men who abducted them. Okay, isn't that wonderful? That's Islam for you. <laughs> um, what do you say to that? I mean, is this an anti-Christian evil? What you know? Let's look. Take a look at the slavery, real quick. All right. Um, again, we all, at least in these circles, we have at least heard about the slavery and all that. But uh, here we see, this is actually a core thing, just so you can see who it's from. Um, yeah, I, I don't, you can say this is not completely vetted, but at any rate, it's talking about what we mentioned before, how the black slaves by Muslims were being made eunuchs. Okay. The Arab history of anti-black racism predates European anti-black racism by several centuries. The early Islamic empire exhibited all the characteristics of the anti-black racism and black suffered lowest form of bondage. By 869 AD, black African slaves in Southern Iraq, the despised Jans launched an extended slave revolt and that threatened Baghdad until 883 AD. The main reasons we have not heard more about the horrors of slavery, blah, blah. Okay, so look, 3,000 black female slaves were set free in Zanzibar in 1860. Okay, it kind of alludes to what we're seeing here. But let me just say, as far as some people that might say, well, this is like ancient history. It was in 2017, 2016. That, who was it? Was it Saudi Arabia? That said finally publicly, public slave trade will not be allowed. In other words, not slave trade will not be allowed, but to do it publicly will not be allowed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, I remember that. That was on the on the news here as well. Yeah, and that was pressure by the West, by by the quote unquote evil white people. Again, it was the Europeans that were the first to abolish slavery. The Christians did away with it. The Muslims are still doing it. Yet the left, the mass media moonies, show solidarity with Islam, and you know all these other things, all these anti-Christian sentiments. A lot of people died doing it as well with the boats, stopping the, the boats, the Navy, the British Navy. There was over 10,000 people that died trying to stop, well, end, ending slavery. And people don't talk about them. Well, yeah. I'm, actually nice about, I'm sorry to catch the last part. I said, yeah, they, they, they lost their lives at sea. And some some were actually murdered during the process as well. Yeah, I'm I have like about a half dozen other things, incidents, reports about you know racism and all that. It's Sunday. I'm kind of sick of the subject. So forgive me, but I'm not gonna share those. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sick of it. But unfortunately, like I said, wherever we turn, there's no escaping it because that's what they want. They want to bombard us with that so they can incite us. So that's why I'm addressing it. And uh, let me just share this one thing, though. 
Um, this is a mid 20th century a news article about how evil the Catholics are. As you can see, they're portrayed as uh, alligators or crocodiles here in this picture coming out of the water as, uh, oh, wow. you know, as Catholic foreigners into the New World. Yeah. So, you know, this racism doesn't stop only with specifically black people. And uh, in the 21st century, those are going on about black racism are actually guilty of racism because they're not acknowledging the, the target in the 21st century is actually specifically the white Christian man, okay, the European. But the ultimate target, of course, is Jesus Christ himself. So, da, 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 da. enough of that nonsense. Let's do something happy, happy. All right, let me share this video. Hopefully, I saved this for last. I wanted to open with this, but I was concerned that YouTube might zap me and uh, take me down for copyright. So I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share this or not. But now that we're ending um, the stream, I'll go ahead and share do that. It anyway. I do that. <laughs> Yeah, not, I mean, if we get booted at this point, it's fine. We're, we're pretty much finished. I had, like, other videos to share and all that. I'm tired. I'm talking this. That's, I mean, we've spent, like, what, over two hours? Almost three hours. Yeah. That's yeah. enough. <laughs> That's enough torture for one day, especially on a Sunday. So I'm going to end with this. But before we do that, uh, what would your closing thoughts be, Christian Apollos? What would you like to say to our audience before I share this video? Well, so um, I just, I mean, what you said basically sums it up. Racism doesn't just stop um, with black people. And people have this kind of thought process where they, they do. They, when you say racist, you think, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a white man um, basically being horrible to other people. And it's not. In, in fact, if anything, the tables have turned massively. And even like it started off at first, you know, kick, kick racism out of football and stuff like that. We understand that people um, like, well, soccer over here. That's how we started here. It was um, people were talking about that because there was some football, well, soccer fans that were... Uh, basically making monkey noises at some of the black players and stuff like that. And they, they were in, instead of like coming to the table to talk about the problems that they, they were facing or that they, they thought were, you know, an issue. They basically just resorted to being, making stupid noises. And, you know, they got in quite, there was quite a lot of fines and arrests and stuff like that here because of that. But then it got a bit more. It started getting into more like the workplace and then the home to the point of they were changing adverts and changing the way that they broadcast television. And you can even see some of the adverts. You've got like a black father, a white mother, a Chinese child, and then they'll get some LGBT Muslim, which none of it absolutely makes sense. You don't see in this world. Like, you don't see that, you know, those type of families existing. And then, you know, and like the pubs you've got on some of the mainstream television that we watch. In some of the pubs, country village pubs, there's about six or seven um, black people in there. Mm. And like two, two or three Asian Muslims drinking alcohol at the bar. And you're thinking, what world is this happening in? Because this doesn't represent what actually does happen here most country village pubs are just basically white people i mean you get the odd one or two and that's absolutely fine anyone's welcome at the pubs i'm not saying that that's the issue what i'm saying is is they're they're making up their own realities right to try and create this utopia image which uh-oh i think oh there we go he's back we 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 need diversity here, so I need you to go and get recruit for me. Two black people, two Asians. I need two Chinese, two disabled people, and two members from the LGBTQ community. But we can only have one white, and the rest of you are fired, by the way, because you know you're white, oh. and we need to tick boxes. 
Oh, so uh, a white person's allowed because Hollywood completely take, has taken out the white people now. Completely, completely gone. Yeah. But, anyway. well, it's but to me, to me, that's that's more racist than calling someone, you know, a racist name. You know, turning around targeting people, saying, hey, do you fancy a job? You know, we need to fill some gaps here. We need to tick some boxes. That's terrible. And yeah. This is what the world has become, and people don't see that now. And instead, you're seeing it's rammed yeah. down your throat. You can't even, yeah. you know, go against it because if you do, no. you're in trouble. Yeah, at least professionally. I mean, you can do it on YouTube and all that, but you then, you know, professionally, we're being uh, subjugated just like the Muslims do with the kafir, which is the yeah. So that's a definitely anti Christian. Uh, and what made me laugh just now as well is uh, a few moments ago when you turned around and you said, yeah, well, look, there's that's Islam for you. I was in a shop. Um, <laughs> my phone was on the counter as I was just buying some stuff because uh, I'm cooking from, uh, for myself and that. And um, there was a, a Muslim, a Pakistani Muslim behind the, the actual oh. counter and uh, his face dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was perfect uh, timing. I only <laughs> known, I would have, I would have brought up Aisha. If I only know. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, he's a new one. I usually I I speak because I I obviously I have um I have I've got Muslim barbers that are from Kurdistan, and we can actually have a laugh about it. Mm. You know they they say they're Muslim, but half of them smoke, drink, gamble, do all sorts. Um, and when I go in, they say, oh, are you going to come and take your Shahada today? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, fat chance, mate. And, uh, you know, I've, I've tried getting them to come on to my YouTube channel to have a debate, but they, they're not that interested. I wonder why. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I see, I see them quite a lot and I can have a laugh with them because they're not actually that bad. You know, they're, they're actually decent peaceful ones but i said to him and i asked him one day i said if you actually took your faith seriously to the letter like we wouldn't be talking would we or having this discussion or having a laugh like the way we do and they said no 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 well they said at least they're honest about it that, that's really promising so it sounds like you can trust yeah the they said if you talk the way you do here in my country they said you'd be dead Wow. And I thought, <laughs> wow. And slowly our nation's becoming. Yep. And there it's. Yeah, because it's it's worrying. Been, yeah, giving given leader positions of leadership, you know, Barack Hussein Obama exactly. on and before. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's go back to celebrating. Okay. I, I was about to say celebrating black people. Oh, that's not what I'm doing. I'm celebrating <laughs> Christianity. <laughs> All right, I'm celebrating Christianity here. Um, let me let me see you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is actually one of my favorite groups. I'll I'll let you guys know. I hope this doesn't sound gay or whatever. But these guys, not these guys you see, but the group uh, or the institution itself, the Mac Macarius Seminary. I have a. Uh, OCMC album from them and these guys when I'm having problems sleeping sometimes I'll, I'll put them on and they'll sing me to sleep how sweet is that right but yeah it's just really good music really really cool um, and this is a, a Christian Africa in Kenya of all places by the way imagine that people aren't aware of it's almost like it's buried it's it's such a shame it's a uh, beyond a shame but anyways, it's Sunday. Let's enjoy this. And uh, I want to, in case we get zapped by you, boob, um, I want to thank everyone for their support. I hope uh, I'm not mis misrepresented myself or anyone else here today. I hope you understand what spirit these things are said. I mean everything I've said, and I say what I mean. I know everything I said is true. And if you're having problems with it, I would challenge you to challenge me about what you have issue with so we can discuss it in length. Yeah, especially in, with, in regards to Islam. 
Islam, racism, uh, the oppression of Greeks, you name it. The oppression of white people, the oppression of men. Um, anything, anything I've talked about here today. I'm, I'm a person of conversation. Those that are getting to know me in Discord can see that. So I in, invite conversation. Discord, Skype, email, you name it. Even, even on a stream. We can do a stream if you want. I'll be happy to do it. Um, okay, so enough of that. Have this. I'm a sap. I gotta say, I got a little misty eyed at the beginning. <laughs> I love the chant in myself. I really do. It's a, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's let's wrap it up in there. Any any last thoughts or anything like that? No, just um. Obviously, we'll talk after about what I was speaking to yep. you earlier about. Um, let's do that. I'll, I'll your sure. testimony. That would be great. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, next week, gang. Um, if if you're up for this, Christian apologist, I've got a friend who, who's got a psychology background. She's published. Um, she asked me if I wanted to do a stream on the speaking of brainwashing, the latest craze about going to voluntarily get 
brainwashed, uh, hypnotized to help you cope with uh, your bad coping strategies. <laughs> so okay. this is yeah, this is a it's been around for a few decades, but it's become a craze lately. They're calling it holistic medicine, and this is quite disturbing. So what I'd like to do a stream on that. Is that something you're you're game for? I'm game for anything, Nicodemus. All right, cool. Um, should we do it our usual time? Saturday at what is it? Uh, what is it? Six GMT. Yeah. So yeah, that sounds good to me. Six six p.m. That'd be perfect. Six p.m. is perfect. Not not seven. Six p.m. Are you sure? Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm I'll let you know. free. So I have no plans next next week, which is good. So right there, I'll have no excuse to be late. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So, all right, cool. We'll do it. We'll see you guys then. Um, let's call it same bad time, same bad channel, even though I hate the number six, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that one out. Um, see you guys next Saturday. And that's, that's that'll be our, our, our topic. I'll be looking forward Take to care. it. God bless. God bless.